Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Pilbara stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Pilbara is a lithium mining company. It owns and operates mines in Western Australia with two processing plants. It expects to generate between 560,000 and 580,000 tons of spodumene concentrate next year. Spodumene concentrate peaked in the fourth quarter of 2021. The company shipped 96,000 dry metric tons, which is its most ever in one quarter. Due to its high lithium content, spodumene is considered the most important lithium ore mineral. Demand has been increasing for lithium and will likely increase for the foreseeable future. The company produced 281,000 dry metric tons of spodumene in 2021. Its accounting period is from July 1st to June 30th. So when I say 2021 for this company, I'm referring to the reporting period from July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. The company participated in the first lithium online auction. It sold 10,000 dry metric tons of spodumene concentrate. The sale price ended up being 1250 US dollars per DMT. That's equivalent to $12.5 million of revenue. The Australian government has encouraged lithium mining because of its importance for battery technology. The federal government and the Western Australian government, along with this industry, have agreed to fund the new modern National Lithium Research Centre that is valued at $135 million. Australia is the largest producer of lithium by tons. Western Australia is the base for a number of lithium miners. Last year, Pilbara acquired the Atura Lithium Project in Western Australia. So if you're looking to invest in lithium, look no further than this company. Lithium, which is also known as Atomic Number 3, is used to manufacture aircraft. It's used in certain batteries. It's also a common treatment for bipolar disorder to help stabilize mood swings. Studies show that lithium can significantly reduce suicide risk. Fully electric vehicles require a large lithium ion battery to store energy and power the motor that propels the car. The lithium ion battery packs in an electric car are chemically similar to the ones found in cell phones and laptops. There is some concern that the world cannot produce enough lithium to fulfill the demand for EVs, making this company a more valuable investment. The company is headquartered in Australia and was founded in 2005. It started trading in 2013 and can be found on the ASX, Pink Sheets, and Deutsche Börse. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid-cap company, 4.5 billion market cap. They're trading at 154 a share and they have 2.9 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video, and free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they don't bring in too much revenue at this point, so they still have negative free cash flow each year. But the negative is really small in 2021. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses, and that's negative each year. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that grows a ton from $8 million way up to $122 million. This is the company's income statement. All their numbers are in Australian dollars. I converted these numbers to US dollars on my Excel spreadsheet since we're looking at the ticker that trades in the US. The top line is the revenue, the sales, and that grows a lot from 10 million Australian dollars up to 164 million, a 16x growth. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses that go into mining the lithium. They have to pay their employees and the various expenses pulling the lithium from the mines and manufacturing it. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit. And that's positive every year, except in 2020, that was negative. Below that is operating expenses, and their operating expenses are higher than their gross profit, so they have negative operating income each year. They spend $18 million in payroll and operating expenses, $26 million in depreciation, that's a non-cash item. They spent $27 million of interest on their debt in 2021, and of course they have negative net income each year. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses or generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit or loss. It's not actual cash. So that's a really good sign. They generate a positive operating cash flow for the first time in 2021. It was negative before that. The reason they generated positive cash flow but negative profit is because of those non-cash items on the income statement. Depreciation is the biggest non-cash item. 
And there's others as well. Stock-based compensation is another one. They spent a lot in 2018 and 2019 in CapEx, 219 million, 178 million. Those two years, they made some large purchases. After 2019, their CapEx scaled down a little over $20 million in 2020 and 2021. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow, which is negative each year. But 2021 was really close to being positive. So they're almost at break even. So they mainly fund their business on capital stock. They issued 156 million in 2018, then 61 million, 112 million, 240 million. When a company issues capital stock, that increases the shares outstanding, making your shares less valuable. So it's pretty obvious why they issued so much capital stock in 2021. They had negative 231 million in investing cash flow. When you acquire a company, the amount you pay for that company goes into investing cash flow. So they funded the acquisition with capital stock. They also added 156 million of debt in 2021, but it looks like they issued that debt to pay down old debt. This is the equity section of their balance sheet. They have 574 million of equity. They raised $821 million from issuing stock and they lost a quarter billion from running their business. Retained earnings is a sum of all your prior net incomes. Let's look at the capital structure, 425 million of equity, 124 million of debt. They're 77% equity, 23% debt. Their net debt is 50 million. Net debt is total debt minus the cash on your balance sheet. And their weighted average cost of capital is 6.95%. And that's a discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated seven years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year seven at 6.8 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $4.8 billion. We divide that by 2.9 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 164. They're trading at 154. So they're trading at a 6% discount. It is a buy according to the model, but it's really close. The way I estimated their future free cash flows in one of their reports, they said they would have between 560,000 and 580,000 tons per annum of spodumene concentrate in 2022. If they generated 570,000 tons in 2022 at $700 per ton, that's a current spot rate. That would give them $400 million of revenue in 2022. According to Simply Wall Street, the average analyst estimate is for their revenue to grow almost 40%. So I grew their revenue 39.7% each year until 2028. And the average company converts 10% of their revenue into free cash flow. So that's how I got their future free cash flow for 2024 to 2028. It's 10% of their revenue. I did give them negative free cash flow in 2022 and 2023 just to be conservative because sometimes expenses are harder than you predict or things take longer to produce than expected. So it appears the market has priced this stock appropriately, at least according to my model. Simply Wall Street is in the other direction. They're saying the stock is worth 65 cents a share. They're saying it's 136% overvalued. Three analysts priced this stock and the average price target was 154. This is where the stock has been trading since 2016. So it was pretty low for a while, but in the past year, the stock has really been driven up. The main reason is when Biden got elected, a lot of stocks like this really shot up. Here's a candlestick chart of the last 12 months. It was down to about 20, 22 cents a share at its low point, but you can see it's been going up little by little. It did peak over $2 but it has regressed a bit since then, but it's still trading a lot higher than it was 52 weeks ago. If you see a red candlestick, that means the closing price on that particular day is lower than the opening price. If you see a green candlestick, that means the closing price is above the opening price on that particular day. So if you own the stock, you wanna see a lot of green candlesticks. You also wanna see a lot of green down here. You can see there's a ton of red. That means there's a lot of sell orders put in. So the stock came down. When the buy orders exceed the sell orders, you'll see a lot of green like here, and then stock price went up. When you invest in a company that mines a commodity like gold, silver, lithium, there's no real secret to figuring out how the stock price moves. It's based off of the underlying commodity. If lithium prices go up, the stock goes up. If lithium prices go down, the stock goes down. Unless something extreme happens, like if the CEO does something fraudulent and the company gets sued, then the stock price may crash. But outside of something extreme, the stock price is pretty much linked to the price of lithium. Here's a chart of the price of spodumene concentrate from Q1 2017 through Q1 2020. It went from 550 up to 800, back down to about 500. I can't find a chart for 2021, but the price has been going up a lot the past year. You can see the spot price is at $700. 
in the middle of 2020, it was as low as $400. And they project it will hit $900 by 2025. If the demand of lithium is so much higher than a supply like it is now, the price is likely to go up way higher. In the company's first auction, they received five bids over $1,100, and the winning bid was $1,250. Maybe auctions are more lucrative, but I'm not sure why they got so much more money than the price it's trading at in the open market. But this was a really successful auction, and this was the first lithium auction, and they plan to do a lot more. This is a pretty volatile stock. It has a beta over two, so it moves two times the market. It's gone up over 500% in the past 52 weeks, a lot better than S&P 500. The 52-week low was $0.22, cents, up to buck eighty-seven, and the stock is trading below its 50-day, but above its 200-day moving average. About 100,000 shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 2.94 billion shares outstanding, 2.4 billion are on float, and 23% are held by institutions. And this stock has done really well the past year, three years, and five years, up a lot more than its industry and the market. Analysts appear bullish on this stock, projecting their earnings and their revenue to grow a lot more than their industry and the market. If you put $10,000 into this company in 2017, you'd have $23,000 today. That's a 25% annual return. The biggest shareholder is Australian Super. This is a pretty big pension fund. It owns over 7% of the stock. The next biggest is Chinese battery manufacturer, Amperex. The next is Ganfang. This is a large lithium producer. Then Vanguard and RCF Management. Let's look at their financial ratios. We can't look at the PE since they have negative net income. They have a pretty high price to sales ratio, so they're not bringing in a lot of revenue relative to their market cap. So this may indicate they're overvalued. They also have a really high price to book. It's a little higher than a market average. Their current ratio is a little below one, quick ratio of 0.7. They have 100 million of cash on their balance sheet, 24 million of receivables, and 39 million of inventory. They do appear to be undercapitalized. They had negative $1 million of free cash flow, negative $4 million of working capital, so they're short $6 million. They may need more debt or equity financing over the next 12 months to run their business. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry, I've done videos of nine other companies in the same industry as PillBF, and if PillBF has number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So they're worse in every category except debt. A lot of small companies don't usually take on debt, mainly because it's hard to get good terms when you're a startup and you don't have that much revenue coming in. And also, you don't have positive cash flow, so you can't pay the interest payments on your debt. So over time, their ratio should improve as they grow their revenue. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 6% discount, but lithium is in really high demand, so this stock may go up a ton. Of course, there is risk when investing in a company like this because they really haven't established themselves yet. But if you're bullish on lithium, this would be a great investment. I ranked their free cash flows 3 out of 10, their revenue 5 out of 10, and their ratio is 3 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.